Everyone calls Kenjaku immortal, but that's wrong. He dies, constantly. Then he just <laughs> moves. Every few decades, he rips out his own brain and plants it inside someone else's skull. New body, new cursed technique, same brain still thinking. He's not surviving time, he's leapfrogging through it. So the question isn't how is he alive, it's how does that even work? Here's the insane part. Kenjaku's entire existence runs on a single technique. Brain transfer jujutsu. He cuts open a skull, slides his own brain in, and the new body instantly becomes him. Motor control, cursed energy, memories, all shift in seconds. Every new host means a new technique to learn. That's why he's been so many people. Noritoshi Kamo, Kaori Itadori, Geto Suguru. Each switch isn't a disguise, it's an upgrade. Now, normally, this should be impossible. You can't just unplug one brain and plug it into another. The body should reject it. Nerves shouldn't connect. Everything should fail. But Kenjaku's brain isn't normal. It's coated in barriers, cursed energy structures that reshape matter and space. That barrier keeps his brain alive, prevents decay, and lets it hijack new bodies without dying. It's not immortality. It's a cursed operating system that installs itself into new hardware. Okay, but here's where it gets creepy science real. First problem, why doesn't the body reject it? When you transplant any organ, your immune system attacks it like an intruder. Even your own twin's kidney can get rejected. The brain is semi-immune privileged, meaning it's a little safer, but still not like this. Kenjaku's barrier likely hacks that response, like shutting off the body's antivirus so he can install himself freely. Second problem, how does he move? In real life, if you put a brain in a new body, it's paralyzed because your brain doesn't automatically connect to new nerves. Kenjaku's cursed technique probably forces those connections through cursed energy, a kind of magical nerve rewiring. Think of it like Bluetooth pairing your brain with a new body. Instant sync. Third problem, does he stay himself? Every body has new memories, new habits, new techniques. Your brain changes with every experience. That's called neuroplasticity. It's like your mind rewiring itself to fit a new environment. So after a thousand years of switching, he isn't one person anymore. He's a patchwork of every life he's ever stolen. Like backing up your phone to a new device. Same data, different hardware. Only now, the data has blended. And this is where it gets disturbing. Kenjaku has lived through everything. The Heian era's golden age of jujitsu, the rise and fall of the great clans, the birth of modern sorcery. Each body he takes, he keeps. The techniques, the memories, the trauma, all fused together. After a thousand years, Kenjaku isn't even a name anymore. It's an idea wearing human skin. Sukuna is powerful because he's ancient. Kenjaku is powerful because he's cumulative. He has accumulated thousand years of techniques, knowledge and experience compressed into one thinking virus. He's not immortal, he's something worse. He evolved past the need to be one person. And that's the real horror here. If your brain could keep living in new bodies for a thousand years, would you still be you? Or would you just be the sum of everyone you replaced? So what do you think? Watch our other anime video infused with science and take care.